I bless God this moment and I thank God for the gift of life and good health to all our viewers, listeners all over the world. Today is a bright new day. I have a, a brief message and a warning to the end time church. That's a, a very brief and I would like you to pay undivided attention because there is impending danger. It's a, it's a, a fast approaching but it pains me that most men of God who are in the corridors of power, they are relaxed. And I see, I see danger. Souls are languishing, souls are perishing. The youth are going astray. Only few people who have eyes of faith will understand what I'm saying. If you watch these days, you see that youths are dying in their numbers and the elders bury the youths. And that's why I have asked in some of my previous productions that when elders bury the youth, who will bury the elders? Because most of the obituary posters I see, you see gone so soon, painfully as it will regret to announce. You hardly see celebration of life. And it doesn't bother most people who are in charge of the flock, who are so-called big shepherd. So what am I saying? The issue of money, prosperity, message about prosperity, which Bible says that is not the main existence of ours on this earth. Of course, the main existence of ours on this earth is to know God, to serve him, and to live with him in eternity. So, material things, mundane things of life shouldn't take the place of God in our lives. But you see some men of God who had big churches, who had big congregations, and most of them are preaching money-centered messages very often. And that's what leads most of the youths. The money mongers, those who are desperate to make wealth. That's the only thing. Because the easiest way for recognition in the church now is donation, money. Of course, when you donate millions, the GO, the bishop, will recognize you. How they will share your numbers to other men of God, you'll be surprised. Your name will just go into their profile. They will have dinner with you, give you a special invitation. And all your sins will be cancelled. But I'm happy for one thing, that we have only one judge. No matter what your pastor tells you, no matter what the reverend, no matter what the bishop preaches to you, my dear, only one message will save your soul. And what is that message? Message of righteousness. I'm sounding a note of warning to men of God, those who preach money-centered message, who pray for those who engage in Yahoo Yahoo, because these days they have three stages now, or three different groups. Now, they have Yahoo now, they have Yahoo Plus, they have Yahoo Plus Extra. They have engaged in so many atrocities, diabolical practices just to make money. Some people made money through pants. It rained some months or years ago. Pampas, women's pad, used pad, menstruation pad, you know, rituals. Some used parts of their body. And some of them are mad. Some run mad. Now, if you go to some churches, you see people preaching, promoting money. Money is good. It helps to in propagating the gospel, but it shouldn't take the place of God. So as I'm rounding up, look at, the Bible says, in 2 Peter, just give me, give me a few seconds, let me read. 2 Peter chapter 2, from verses 4. Listen very well what the Bible says. He said, God did not spare the angels who sinned, God threw them into hell, where they are kept in chains and darkness, waiting for the day of judgment. Verse 5. 
God did not spare the ancient world, but to brought the flood on the word of God, godless people. The only ones he saved were Noah, who preached righteousness. I'm reading from Good News Bible. Who preached righteousness, underline it, righteousness. And the seven other people. Verse 6. God condemned the cities of Sodom and the Gomorrah, destroying them with a fire, and they made them an example of what will happen to the godless. Verse 7. He rescued Lot, a good man who was distressed by the immoral conduct of lawless people. The good, that good man lived among them, and day after day, he suffered agony as he saw and they heard their evil actions. Now, I stopped in verse 8. Let me pause a bit and say something. Now, look at the condition why Noah and his family were saved. Because he preached righteousness. Noah was not the only preacher then. But let's just put it that other preachers were preaching prosperity because there were parties, there were weddings, there were different occasions, merriment. Even when Noah was giving warning. So Bible said the only preacher among all preachers that God saved was Noah and his family. God saved Noah because he was a preacher of righteousness. But there were rich men in those days. There were rich men. But he was preaching the heartbeat of God. What God asked him to preach. So look at the end time church. And look at Lot again. The only condition why Lot was rescued was he was a good man. A righteous man. Lot was righteous. He had a burden. In his heart. Because of the iniquities and atrocities of people of Sodom and Gomorrah. And God saved the Lord. God saved Noah. Now we are in end time battle. And the Bible told us beforehand that these things happening now will happen. What kind of message do you preach from your pulpit? From your altar? What kind of congregation do you prepare? That is my question. That is my concern. Because looking at what is happening now, a good workman who wants to uproot a tree, a bad tree, we uproot that tree from the nursery stage. So you will uproot even all the roots. But if you allow that tree to grow, that tree will become matured. Then you look for dharma. You negotiate with the dharma and you make expenses for it. Then the dharma will now think where the tree will fall. Where they will tie rope. Where they will draw it. Then he will cut in partitions. You look for, you know, lorry that will come and carry the trees out of the compound. So if you're a good workman, you uproot the trees, the bad tree, from the nursery stage effortlessly. So what is happening now? Most people want to make it so that man of God will recognize them. So that people will respect them. That's why I do want the church. Bible did not say give honor to the rich. I did not read that in the scriptures. Bible say, give honor to whom honor is due to. Not to the rich, but to whom honor is due to. In other words, if there are honorable rich men in the house of God, there are honorable poor men as well. Take it again. If there are honorable rich men, there are honorable poor men. That man, that carpenter, who serves God in truth and in spirit, and who does the work, you know, repairing every bench, every wooden, you know, materials in the church, free of charge, the way of his own donation, he deserves honor. That woman that cleans almost all the benches, all the chairs in the church, and he, she does it freely, that she deserves honor. The same honor you give to the man who gave one million. All fingers are not equal. The most important thing is from a good heart. But the honor given to the rich is the only thing that motivates most of the young men and women just to make it. 
so that they will be announced in the church. They will be respected. They will have the numbers of the top men of God. I'm sounding this as a note of warning. Church, let us be careful. The only thing that we save the church and we save most of the souls that are perishing is nothing but message of righteousness. That is the only thing that will save us from this situation. Message of righteousness. I believe I will still treat about money, money, money. This topic is money. We have to look into it. Money is good. I like money. I don't love it. But we have to treat about money. So let us know how to go about it. So that it will not cost us heaven. It will not bring a barrenness of a busy life. After all these years. And somebody will miss the target. It will be horrible. So that's my brief message today. So that it will begin to restore things. That the enemy is destroying. Even before our eyes. So I thank you for your attention in this brief message and I bless you. I urge you to subscribe to our YouTube channel, God's Agenda TV. Then share this video to save souls. Uh, you can follow our, our Facebook page, God's Agenda Production and other uh, social media networks. So God bless you as you share. My name is Brother Chibo Paul. Remember, visit our YouTube channel, God's Agenda TV, to watch all our inspirational videos. Remember to hit the notification button, subscribe, like, and share. God's Agenda Production, your soul is our target. Agenda Production.